Hello everyone, and welcome back to Cursed Reading with Leighton Scow. Um, so yeah, it's been a little bit. Um, we're back again, and I have my new uh, blue snowball mic. Yes, I, I, I bought this just so that I could read spy fan fiction to you in the, in the best quality that I can afford right now. Well, okay, that's it's not actually why I got it. It's just a it's just a bonus, you know. So, but okay, so we. It's very interesting, um, having a. Oh, let me. It's very interesting filming a video and me not having headphones on. I I kind of like it actually, but definitely for gaming stuff that won't change because you know it'd be weird to because I you know but anyway. But yes, um, we're setting the mood today. I'm, I've got my, I've got my nice, uh, candle going here. I've got my coffee. It is a rainy, I almost said Monday, it is a rainy Tuesday morning here in Ohio. So I thought, what better way, what better, what better way to start the day than just falling out of bed and deciding to do more cursed reading. So, and I know, I know it's like, I, I, I was thinking, I'm like, because the first cursed reading I did was me reading these, like, really weird, um, like, original stories that were, like, this year. But, like, what I'm trying to say is that besides that original video, all of my cursed reading has been TF2 related. <laughs> and I, I can't help it. There's ju I just keep finding stuff. And it's just funny because after this, I found... I'm so excited for it. I, I thought I'd go ahead and do this because I had this, like, in my list for, like, ever. Um, Chip is joining us today, sadly. I'm being a heretic and I'm drinking coffee out of him. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be getting, getting through this. And um, then we're going to be going on to what I have planned next, which I'm very excited for. It's TF2 related, but it's also not it's a crossover with something and they're both things that i like so i think it'll be it'll be very fun but anyway today let's go ahead and i'm dressed like a grandma for today's occasion i hope you don't mind i thought that would fit our vibe or something i don't know like we're just you know we're just anyway so today <clears throat> we're going to be reading TF2 Spy, ex-reader. Very straightforward and to the point title. We don't have any time for, you know, original titles or anything. You just gotta get straight to the point. That's, I respect that. Um, can you even see? I, I tried, I wanted to like crop things. So that they could like, um you know, look a bit a, a little bit better on my screen and, you know, I can have my shit around me and everything, including myself. Um, but I don't know if you can see, there's an ad here that says, older men are using this here, must see, and it's like a, a, a middle-aged woman. Are they using her? Hmm, that's interesting. Anyway, um, but yeah, there's some nice, uh, ads here. So, um, let's look at the statistics regarding this piece of media, shall we? So, it is 16 parts, so 16 chapters, but according to Wattpad, it is a 40-minute read time, so they're short. Um, that's already a good sign. Um, it's had, it has almost 200, 200,000, God, um, God forbid. It has two, almost 2k votes, it has, uh, almost, uh, 61k reads, and it is ranked number 87 in the T- F, the TF2 tag here on Wattpad. So I am, I'm very excited. Like top 100. Damn. Like this, this must be, this must be good. M this must be like, we're about to read like the New York Times best selling. Well, that doesn't mean much actually. But so the description reads, oh, and it's by Mall Doll writes. I'm I'm guessing that's it rhymes with doll, so I'm guessing it's mall. That's a mall, that's a hard thing for me to say. But from <clears throat> Mall Doll writes, and according to it, it's ongoing. Um, I don't know 
Oh, so yes, this is the last updated um, in 2017. So I don't know how ongoing it is, but they have it to, they have it labeled as that. Um, the description reads: "The story of you, a reader with female pronouns, and the lovely Frenchman, Frenchman, known as Spy. I don't own TF2 or you, but I do own the story. Enjoy." Smiley face, emoticon smiley face. Well, thank you for reiterating that you don't own me. Very nice. Um, I needed that. Oh, and it warns suggestive themes in later chapters. So, it seems we're going to be taking a break from the truly heinous, um, uh, constant talk of cocks as previous episodes. So, if you were worried about that, you can you can just kind of take a breath and rest easy. So we're going to be doing, I think we're going to be going a little bit wholesome today and I'm very excited for that. So, so before we jump right in, you can see, um, I have actually, at one point I looked through chapter one and chapter two because like chapter one's like nothing. It's like a, basically like a little thing. Um, but yeah, I looked through the first two just to get, uh, an, like an, uh, analyze to, to run some analysis <laughs> to run some nah, yeah to, to check out and make sure it was worth uh, my my very very valuable time um, so yeah that's why it says 100 complete 100% complete on the girl but yes you can see we have some very very quality um, chapters to get into um, and before I get in, I always like <clears throat> to kick off these videos. Well, we're not really kicking off anymore. We're kicking off the beginning of the reading that just a quick disclaimer that I do these videos for fun and because it's something I find interesting. Um, I like looking at stuff that I might label as cringe, but that doesn't mean... I, I, I it, you know, it's, if you know me, you know what I post. I'm not above really anything like this. So, um, there might be some stuff I'm above, but not, not, you know, I feel like the things I like to look at are things that, you know, I, part of it, even if it's something I might not make myself, uh, basically long story short, we're not here to call anyone a bad person or anything like that. So it, if you're going to go make, if you're going to go in anyone's comments and make fun of them, just do it to me. If, if you have any, you know, just not rage, but if you have any, even that too, if you have anything in your heart that makes you want to just go and shit talk any of the people we cover, you can just, you can just vent it. You can just do it to me. So that's fine. Um, there's a lot of material to work with. So also I'm still getting like, I feel like every time I use my camera, I like do it for a few times in a row and I get a little bit used to it. And then by the time I get used to it, I stop doing it, but we're not doing that this time. Like I kind of feel like when I have my camera on, I look like a psychopath, but that's, that could just, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I am. I don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> All right. So chapter one, as you could see, it is a whole, um, that this is it right here. Chapter one. <clears throat> wow. When I, I don't know why that was so loud. Wow. When BFF slash N. So it'd be best, f like a best friend, but what, no one? N or just name. <laughs> no one. When no one said, um, let's see, um, already we're, we're stuck with a dilemma. Um, that's it. I'm going to be the best friend because if you're here, there's a good chance you are one of my best friends. So, so let's, um, so yeah. I'll, I'll be the role of the best friend in this, in this narrative experience. I already decided I'm not going to be the your name because we don't, I think the cringe might just implode if we do that, so. Wow. When Justine said it was a wasteland, she wasn't kidding. Looking through the train window, all I see is sand, rocks, and the occasional cactus. I look down at the paper Justine emailed me. Help wanted, ongoing fight, must be willing to risk life. It's the 15th time I've read this, but I'm just noticing the little asterisk. Asterisk. Sorry, I can't speak. I look at the bottom of the page. It says, repeatedly? Huh? 
Must be really dangerous then. <laughs> Good. I am a mercenary after all. No fun if there's no danger. Justine had also checked out the job, them being a mercenary as well. But they didn't care for the location and it wasn't specific on details. That's not very like me. That's why she sent me to that's why she sent it to me. Every time I see the like the he she it always throws me off. I love mystery in a job. Next stop, two four my stop. I suddenly realized how nervous I was. I looked down at the paper again. I l looking at the note I'd written down from the phone call I'd made. A kind sounding woman named Miss Pauling told me someone would be there to pick me up. Just look for a group of men in red. They'll be pretty hard to miss. I looked at my outfit since my interview was over the phone. I didn't bother dressing up. Red sweatshirt, black skinny jeans, and shiny black high heel, oh, high heel combat boots. I thought that was going somewhere else. I wore a little bit of makeup as well. I was just imagining just like... I mean, I guess high heel combat boots could be a bit funny too, but like, eh, that's a little better, I guess. We have arrived in Two Fort. <clears throat> Those who stop this is, please exit now. I don't think that's how they'd word that, but th this English is better than, you know, some other stuff we've checked out. This is it. I get out of my seat and grab my bag. It's not too heavy as I only brought a few essentials as well as some personal effects. As I reach the train door, I stop for a moment. I close my eyes and hope that whoever my teammates are will be somewhat nice. I step off the train and look around, on a huge sign right above my head. Welcome to Two Fort. Well, at least we know our 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 reader is a huge sweetie pie, because they're like a they're like a they're like a mercenary who loves danger, but they want their fellow mercenaries to be nice, which I guess then that might be a fair assessment. Um <laughs> Is this Want just one month ago. Get ready to work with a whole team of mentally sick racists. All right then. Um, can you just say they, dude? This whole she him is getting annoying, Lamau. Um, I'd wear a red jacket, a black crop top, and uh, some jeans and running shoes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow, a new job. Does this mean blow job? Wow, that's good. Um, oh my god, everyone just saying in the comments what they wear. I can't. And it all looked like the same. Red, thin flannel, black vest, black basketball shorts, black tennis shoes. That's the stuff. No, how about a red tank top, black men's workout shorts, and some black running shoes. Won't look good, but at least you'll be able to kick ass without kicking your own. That's what I like to see. We got we got intellectuals in the comments, guys. Okay, continue to next part. Before we get into Spies POV, I have to take a drink. <clears throat> I still don't understand why Pauling sent three of us. I heard Sniper, sn sniper mumble next to me. Could have just sent Engie. He's the one that likes people. You act like I wish to be here, stuck with you and that insufferable boy scout. Wait. Insufferable- wait. Is it you- like- like a boy scout? As in like a girl scout but a boy? Or- or are we saying that insufferable boy scout? Well, oh no, I'm guessing it should be one word because they did the little- little dash thing, so I go- okay. Me and the Bushman were not best friends by any means, but I still liked him more than Scout. Hey, you got something to say? Say it to my face, you frog. Uh, okay, thank you for removing the ad. Hmm, maybe, is, is my ad blocker working, maybe? Hmm, I turned to, to Scout after taking a drag of my cigarette. I hate you, I say, blowing the smoke in his face. Fuck you, Frenchie. Oi, train's here. I turn away to look at the approaching train. Mademoiselle Pauling said we are, we are to look for someone in a red sweatshirt and black jeans. It seems we are to have another teammate with no taste in clothing. Passengers started filing off the train. People of all sorts, tall and thin, short and stocky. However, one particular passenger caught my eye. A woman, young adult, tres bon. 
she had ooh, ooh, what do we want our hair color to be? Oh, um, she had how about short blonde? Let's be let's be cool here. Let's be original. She had short blonde hair and was looking around confused. Okay, I, I just I have to ask regarding this line. Like, because I, I distinctly remember, like, reading this when I was checking out this out, and I, and I just, like, laughed. Because it, it's a little nitpick. Like, I, I, my nitpick with, like, people writing Spy is when people, like, have him randomly say French out of nowhere. Because, like, in stuff like Expiration Date, <laughs> and stuff, I apologize for that, and stuff like expiration date and just like any of the or even like his own video like his own uh meet the spy and just like anything he's in he doesn't really talk like that um like if you go based on like in-game voice lines yeah i'm getting i'm getting a bit of a i'm we're, we're getting a little bit uh i'm going in i i'm i'm taking this very seriously okay that's why i'm here okay like but like he doesn't talk like that and but I was wondering, like, for you people who are, like, bilingual or, you know, speak multiple languages fluently, do you ever do this? Would you, is this a sentence that you would ever think of? Like, would you, like, cause, like, I can understand, like, if I was bilingual, I think maybe I would, like, have different thoughts in different languages. Like, maybe, like, I'm trying to learn French and... But usually when I'm thinking about French, I'm, like, going over, sent like, full French sentences in my head. Like, to just kind of, like, think of it, if that makes sense. Um, I don't ever think about necessarily, like, oh, I'm thinking of a sentence in English and then just say a French word or something. Like, I'm, I, but, like, let me know because I'm wondering, like, I, I'm taking, I just, it's an interesting thought, you know? It's just, like, I don't want to say, like, it sounds completely stupid because maybe some people do think like that. But in this context, this sentence sounds dumb. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> she looked briefly at the sign, saying, Welcome to Two Fort, and sighed. Looking down at a piece of paper, she walked towards a bench and sat down. Are you bloody kidding me? Sniper shouted rather loudly. Not a single bloke stepped off the train matching the description. We're gonna try- I'm gonna try- How about I try some, some accents here? Uh, perhaps we have arrived early? Or the dumbass chickened out and bailed. I ignored Scout as usual. And instead turned my attention back to the girl. She was reading a book, though I cannot see the title. She intrigued me. I decided it best to indulge my curiosity and started walking towards her. A hand grabbed my shoulder. Where you think you're going, mate? <laughs> so, so good. Well, seeing as how our package has yet to arrive, I'm going for a bit of a walk. Fine, but don't be long. I will leave you here. I'm guessing Sniper said that. Noted. With that, I threw what was left of my cigarette on the floor. Ugh, Spy wouldn't do that. He wouldn't be that big of an asshole. I, I, he would definitely, he, he would definitely, like, I don't know, maybe outside, like, I don't know. Something, or sm smothering it with one of my dress shoes. I like to imagine he's like holding a shoe, like, like, I don't know. And turned to the girl. Just as I did, she looked up, making eye contact with me. I put on my best smile and strode confidently towards her. Oh, you gotta love a your name moment. Oh, I love. I'm not a tree bone. <laughs> I, you're wrong. I'd show up dressed as a clown. OMG Sniper. OMF Baba, Baba Grill. Oh my god. I love free... I love free... I love French people. How dare you? Please help. I've been kidnapped by the French government. They're making me eat cheese and baguettes. Okay. The fuck is wrong with your own son? Go, Boston boy, go. Shut up, spy. I don't like you. Oh, wait, I'm reading a story about you. You 
<laughs> like the damn Bushman more than your own son. Okay, we have to clarify something. Even if we if we take the whole spy being Scout's dad real, it's a uh, red spy and blue Scout. It's not that he it, like we're getting nitpicky here, but like it's not red Scout is not the one that is supposed to be his son. So just to clarify there, because <clears throat> he's seen you know with Scout's mom who's wearing blue and we're. Pretty sure that's intentional. That she's wearing blue. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if you know, I'm kind of like the TF2 lore expert, so that's why I do this. Um, uh, okay, we're back to RP RPOV. I have not read this. I have not read this. The Gentleman. I looked around. I looked briefly around the station. I wasn't really paying attention, or I would have noticed the group of red-clad men. Isn't that, like, the whole reason you're there? Like, you're literally- What else are you supposed to do? You're there to get off the train and look for the group of red- Of people in red. Anyway, <clears throat> not seeing anyone, I looked down at my paper again and decided to wait for a bit. Maybe my train came early. Looking to my left, I see an empty bench and decide to bide my- I must said bite. To bide my time, reading the only piece of literature I brought with me. A Tale of Two Cities. God, I love this book. A tale of love, heartbreak, and sacrifice. I've read it about a thousand times. But I don't care. I sit down and open to the first page. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I hear a noise. Like something is being crushed. It, and I look up, curious. Wait. Is this to impl in imply that she could hear him crushing a cigarette with her foot? Because... Isn't he, like, across the street, too, or something? Like, isn't he over here? And he did that and then walked over? Either way. Either way, if it was right in front of her, I don't... It, you wouldn't hear it that well. Like, to the point of it sounding like something being crunched. Like, does he have glass in the cigarettes? I mean, who knows? <clears throat> Sorry, I was, like, looking... I was doing the thing where I was looking ahead at the, at the line and I'm just laughing... I hear a noise, like something was being crushed, and I looked up curious. Just as I do, a very tall man looks at me, making eye contact. He's wearing a burgundy suit with matching tie and balaclava. Why someone would wear a balaclava outside of winter, I have no idea, but to each their own. Oh crap, he's walking towards me. I look down at my book again, hoping he walks over to someone else. I try to continue reading, but can only focus on the sound of approaching footsteps. Damn my curiosity! I look back up. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Um, hello. Is this seat taken? He gestures to the seat next to me on the bench. No, go... go ahead. Why the hell am I stuttering? He sits down next to me and starts fiddling with a cigarette case. May I ask you what you are reading? Tale of Two Cities. Ah, Charles Dickens, you have good taste, mademoiselle. I decide to show off a bit. Merci. Il est... Wait. Il est une de ma auteurs préfères? <laughs> he looked at me, shocked. Tu parles français? I nodded, and he smiled. I've always been interested in French culture. <laughs> Have you been to Paris? I wish. I've never had the opportunity. Oh my god, this is so me, guys. He started to say something else. When someone screamed, we both jumped up. Him pulling out a, a balisong he had hidden in his sleeve. And I, my twenty-two pistol that I keep on my hip. We both look around until I see... Is... Is that bread? I like how- I just love the idea of all they hear is a scream. Like, especially Spy, like, you know, he's supposed to be kind of like, you know, a spy, you know, kind of secretive and stuff, but no, he just like, hears a scream and just jumps up and has a- is a balisong a knife? Am I stupid? Or maybe it's a- because I know of like, a ballista, but that's like a big thing, isn't it? Oh well, it's a weapon. Um, this person, you get points because I don't know what. Wait, let me. Whoa, 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 hold on. 
What's a bala song? According to Wikipedia, a butterfly knife, also known as a bali song, bat knife or batangas knife, is a type of folding pocket knife that originated in the Philippines. Its distinct features are two handles counter rotating around the tang such that, when closed, the blade is concealed within grooves in the handles. All right then, yeah, I, I I always just call it a butterfly knife. I'm a I'm a I'm a, a, a an idiot, I guess. I will remember that. I did not know that the uh, like a butterfly knife was called a balance song. Point one to the author. <clears throat> okay, and this is chapter meet the team. <clears throat> Get back here, you stupid piece of veet! I heard a I heard a German voice yelling. Medic was chasing that infernal yeast beast, while Engineer walked up to the sniper and scout. As they were walking, presumably about our missing person, the bread ra the bread ran up to meet me and the girl. Oh, I, ke I keep forgetting we're from Spice POV now. With Medic close behind, we both put our weapons away. <clears throat> And the creature stopped at the girl's feet. Medic picked it up, breathless from chasing it. Finally. Oh, her spy! Medic, I glance at the creature. Why on earth have you brought that thing here? Well, you, sniper and scout, have been gone a while. So me and the engineer came to see if there was a problem. My little pet seemed to have followed us. This is really bad. I'm sorry. I <laughs> I need to practice. Let's we'll view this as practice. We can practice together. I, I'm I'm like one of those people. Like I'm always too embarrassed to try doing accents, and I don't do it by myself enough. So let's let's yeah. Um. Sorry to interrupt, but is that bread? Living bread? Oh, apologies, Frar. I did- that's how you said it, right? I did not see you there. And yes, it is. Huh. My apologies, mademoiselle. Désolé. I don't believe I caught your name. She blushed. Um... We don't have a name. Um... Oh, that's right. I told my friend Amelia I'd throw her under the bus. We're just going to use her name. Your Amelia is now a blonde, a short blonde woman. Um, Amelia, a beautiful name for a beautiful woman. She blushed deeper. I have not seen you in town before. You are new, I presume? Uh, yes, new job. I'm going to get confused with who who's saying what. Yes, new job. I was told someone would be here to pick me up. It was then that I noticed her outfit. Red sweatshirt, black skinny jeans, and black high-heeled combat boots. Hmm, gentlemen. Sniper, scout, medic, and engineer turned to me. Wait, I thought engineer wasn't here. I believe I have found our new teammate. They looked for me to... Oh, I keep forgetting we're in, we're in Spies POV. They looked to me, to, to Amelia, and back again. <laughs> Well, I'll be. The laborer stepped up and took off his I almost his haircut. Took off his hard hat, extending his ham his ham to Amelia. Name's Engineer. Angie, if you like. Nice to meet you. Engineer then introduced the rest, bar me. The rest of the team is back at base. You can meet him later. <laughs> that leaves me. I turn to her smiling. I take her hand, kissing it. Je suis spy. This is, um... Like... I didn't look at the comments. I just saw my name is Quagmire Giggity. Wow, amazing. Amazing comments. Oh, four signs that liver disease may be developing. Um... <clears throat> okay. We're gonna try to make it halfway through. So I'm gonna try to make it to about, like, part, like, eight. So strap in, and then we'll do the rest in a sequel. So, because why, why, why wouldn't we finish this? Come on, we gotta finish. We gotta we gotta finish things. We can't just go in and half-ass and then not do it. I don't know why I'm holding the mic like this. I just felt compelled to. Chapter five, settling in. Your POV. Je suis spy. He kissed my hand like a gentleman. 
I couldn't help but plush even more than I already was. We're, she's as red as a tomato at this point. At this point. Well, it's nice to meet you all, I said kindly. Also, I'm so sorry if I butcher any, like, long sentences of French. Like, the first sentence she said, I think I know what she said, but those were, like, some of those words were not ones I'm used to looking at. I'm not at that point in Duolingo yet, okay? I can say greetings, though, pretty okay, so. <clears throat> Speaking is so much harder than typing. Like I, like, I can type certain things pretty well, like, from memory on my phone right now, but, like, speaking, no. So sorry to any French people who might be watching. Uh, there probably isn't, but <clears throat> already people who know French. How about that? Sniper stepped up. Sorry we didn't notice you, Sheila. Guess we were expecting another bloke. Uh, pr I'm gonna sound Eng I'm gonna sound British. I chuckled. It's fine. I'm used to it. After all, not many female mercs out there. I'm I'm special. I'm kind of. <laughs> Well now, Engineer said, we best be headed back to the base. It's getting late now, I'm guessing this little lady's hungry. For cereal. I opened my mouth to say something, but my stomach growled answering for me. Okay. It was a short drive to the base, especially considering we were on an empty highway with a 50 mile per hour speed limit. When we reached the base, we got out of the bread van, and they led me to the wreck area. Good lore there. I, I In my things, they use the bread van too. Good good job. Well, which, why wouldn't they? That's, like, what they're depicted using. Good job. <clears throat> We've got a fellow lore aficionado, uh, rivaling me. I mean, they knew what, a uh, Balasong was, so, like, I, I should be intimidated. Listen up, boys. New Mercs here, Angie said. In one corner of the room was a guy passed out with a bottled label scrumpy in his hands. That there, that there's demo, and jo <laughs> and she said <laughs> to me, the big bear of a man is heavy. Hello, little girl. That wasn't good. The one in the gas mask is Pyro. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> and and the one with the helmet is he was cut off. I am Soldier Maggot, and you are a woman. <laughs> I just nodded. Poker faced. Women are not met for the battlefield. How do you know? How do we know you can even fight? Okay, um. I don't know, like, on one hand, I can see him maybe thinking that, but, like, I can't. I don't know, like, I think Soldier is just. I don't think he would give a shit, honestly. I sighed. You have a training room, yes. Affirmative. Well then, I set my bag down. Why don't we find out? They led me to the training room. It had a boxing square in the middle. I climbed in. Who wants to fight? I asked confidently. The Bostonian scout stepped up. But of course, of course you're going to pick scout. The one that would like... Which, I don't know, I think scout would be stupidly strong because... He literally grew up, like fighting with uh six other brothers or is it seven I, I always forget if he's the seventh or if he has I, I, anyway he grew up with a ton of brothers always fighting them so like i get what you're doing here like but i i don't know it just i i guess we'll see how this goes but unless she's gonna do like some you know like smart like if this is just gonna be raw power versus power no <clears throat> You're going down, sweet cheeks. All right, you two. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. First one... First one down loses. Fight! Scout came at me, fist flying. <laughs> I sidestepped him easily, grabbing his right arm. As I did so, I twisted his arm behind him and pushed him into the ground, hitting a pressure point to temporarily paralyze him. Okay. Holy dooly. Or holy dooly. <laughs> Scheisse. I'm pretty sure that's how you say that word. They all exclaimed something. All save soldier. He walked up to me, seemingly unimpressed. He looked at me, stoked for a solid minute, but then he smiled. Well done, maggot. Welcome to the team. I'm glad that's all she had to do. Which, I mean, I guess, like I said, fair. what's fair is fair is, like, at least it was, like, a maneuver that, like, was more of, like, a, a self-defense kind of thing that's more about, you know, like, you know. Uh, taking advantage of someone's, like, uh, you know, pre like, 
what am I trying to say? Like weak points or whatever, you know? Um, so yeah, okay, I'll, I'll accept it. I don't think she'd be able to do that if it was heavy or something though, but, but, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. It's, 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 yeah, that's not the point. Cause I don't think my TF2, I, I don't even know, like, I have not thought about that yet of like, that's something I need to think about with my TF2 OC is like, I don't know, uh, well, with her, though, it's a bit different because she joins the team, not, um, like, she's familiar with, like, the world of crime, in a sense, um, because of her father, but she's not, like, a fighter, and she kind of becomes a bit of one, so, um... But I always envision her more of, like, a helper kind of thing. So, if that makes sense. Like, she's a little bit of a jack-of-all-trades in a sense. Um, but this isn't about me. Why am I talking about my own cringe? We're not here to talk about my cringe. We're here to talk about this cringe. Anyway. Okay. After Medic <clears throat> checked Scout to make sure he was okay. As if he wouldn't be. Everyone went their separate ways, at least until supper. I went back to the rec room to grab my bag and while spy or wh whilst walking out ran into spy bonjour he smiled and I felt my heart skip a beat hi allow me to show allow me to show you to our our <laughs> your I a room I, I don't think I don't know that doesn't sound right merci he held out his elbow and I hooked my arm through his so I love how cheesy this is. He led me down a hallway lined with rooms labeled with the class's signs. We stopped at the end of the hallway. Now see, I know this isn't about me. I, I'm just, I have to brag because I have no one else to talk to about this. Well, actually I do, but it, it's different. It's different talking to you, to you guys. Um, well, I'll, I'll finish this. This is your room. There's no symbol yet though, as we are not told your class. He looked at me, eyebrow raised. Right. I haven't properly introduced myself. I held out my hand. Emilia. We're not doing a last name. Emilia. He shook my hand. I'm the agent. Amazing. Original. Inspired. I can't wait to see how different from Spy she is. I am looking forward to this very much. I'm gonna go out here on a limb here and just say she's gonna be like Spy, but she's gonna have all this other crazy shit, you know? Because that's what we have to do. <clears throat> um, what was I gonna say? Oh no, yeah, in my in my uh, fan fiction I'm working on, I. Because I made um, Gorge as the main, like, red base. I'm kind of biased towards it. I like it. But I also think the layout, like, works. Um, so basically the back area of Gorge. Like, the back rooms behind the last point. How there's, like, the respawn point, And then there's, like, the hallway. And there's also, like, an area that, like, you can't actually get to. It's modeled, but, like... It's like this extra big area. It has a bunch of those, like, um... It's just got a bunch of random, like, mechanical... Not mechanical. Like, it has, like, some radio things back there or something. But it's unused. Like, you can't get into it in the game. Um, but you can in, like, Gmod. But I... For mine, because, like, I have it that, like... Some of the mercs stay on base and a couple of them don't. Or they have, like times that they leave essentially and like they have homes they go back to I kind of thought that made sense like um but basically like everyone has kind of like a room but they're not labeled or anything they're kind of scattered because I, again I thought that made more sense I didn't think it made sense to have them be like labeled and stuff it's a little bit too cheesy in my opinion but um yeah sorry I, I don't I'm just I just feel like sharing I just I don't get I don't get to talk about my my TF2 fan fiction that much so um anyway <clears throat> I kind of did that too to make like uh like things like a like spy smoking room to make sense because like I kind of consider that like canon because like I I do 
like the idea of them having like kind of themed rooms because like you know it's kind of shown so it's like kind of a middle of like being kind of like out there in terms of like why would but like yeah i don't know how i feel about just like a hallway like like a dormitory like i don't i don't think of them having as like a dorm but that's just me so this isn't really like i'm just getting off on a tangent because i just want to i like talking i don't know if you know that about me anyway chapter six intriguing spies pov i'll try to not forget whose pov we're in this time i'm the agent i raised an eyebrow agent an interesting choice for a class dangerously close to a spy hmm interesting or intriguing ah i shall leave you to settle in she nods thanking me for showing her the way and enters her room agent I put my hands in my pockets and decide to take a breather in my smoking room. <laughs> oh, it was a short walk. And can I just say, like, how constantly, like, I wish we had, um, like, the actual, like, models of the rooms from expiration date. Um, but they, that doesn't, like, that's not a thing. Like, we don't have them. Like, as far as I know. Like, they're not in Gmod, at least. Like, I wish we had them. Because, like, I'd love to do, like gmod photography in them but alas uh it was a short walk as her room was only a few doors down from my own convenient as i walk into my smoking room i'm greeted by my painting a bowl of fruit cliche i know but i of course added my own touch when painting it a balisong stuck in the apple I shrug off my suit jacket, putting it on the coat rack. That is very interesting. I I would not have, like, that's a very, I, when I, whenever I, like, my main hobby that I have given to Spy is that he likes reading a lot. So we already covered that, but now he's an, he's an artist, too. Oh, my goodness. Um, I like that that's the first thing we're, we're noting as cliche. Not anything else. Just Just this painting of a bowl of fruit. I was concerned about that. <clears throat> I shrug I shrug off my suit jacket interesting word there putting it on the coat rack battles are over for the day so I pour myself a glass of brandy I take my usual seat in my chair light a cigarette and grab the latest copy of Dapper Cadaver good good inclusion as much as I tried to focus on the articles my mind kept saying kept straying to Amelia I don't know why, but something about her fascinated me. She knows she knows French. Oh my god. There's no other women that know French in the world, guys. And she's a mercenary. Oh my god. After a few minutes of contemplation, I decided to look up her file for Manco. It was by no means a difficult task. I would not be where I was was now if I could not retrieve simple intel. Printing a copy of her file, I sit down and begin to read. It, of course, had a physical description of her. Blue eyes, blonde hair, but I was not interested in the obvious. I wanted details, and for that I looked at her biography. Um, Amelia was born in Nelsonville. After graduating high school, she attended a university specialized in training agents for work in the FBI, CIA, and other government agencies. Ooh. She graduated with highest honors and worked for the BAU unit for the FBI for three years. Then she resigned, becoming a legal assassin agent for hire, accepting jobs of murder, intel, retrieval, etc. The rest of it was backed out. She was essentially so she was essentially an enigma. How is she an enigma? That is that, that's literally like almost every in like terms of like work. That's like everything, like. Like, I guess, in an enigma in terms of, like, why would she go from, like, you know, graduating honors and all that and being in, like, all these freaking high government agencies and then being, you know, a, a, an, a, a legal assassin agent for hire. Is that a thing? Can you become a legal assassin? Am I stupid? Am I in the wrong career choice? No. <laughs> the rest of it was blacked out, so she was essentially in Mingo. She, she was fascinating, she was. Interesting. Yeah, that's... That, I'm calling bullshit on this one. Okay. This will be our... 
this will be our final chapter for today. I think we have, uh, we're reaching the point of my voice kind of, <clears throat> you know. Oh, so I wanted to co record this yesterday, but I had to go to the dentist and it, like, fricked me up for the rest of the day. My, like, even after the numbness wore off from, like, you know, the whatever it is. I forget what that stuff's called, but, like, you know, the numbing stuff. Like, the upper, like, left part of my lip was fricked all day. It was just so weird. I was, like, worried. I was, like, what the heck? Like, sorry, I didn't mean to. Okay. Getting, getting to know you. I don't know what that was. Isn't that, like, a song? Isn't that a, I don't know. Your POV. Done. It's been an hour since shot spy showed me to my room. Since then, I've put my things away and read a good push portion of my book. My room was fairly plain, a queen-sized bed. Why? Oh, how convenient. Two <laughs> like I said that and I'm like, okay. Like that's the biggest, like not even a king, like or wait. You know, yeah, queen is the biggest. And a small desk to the right wall. What I loved most about the room was the the size. It was much bigger than I expected, with windows reaching from the floor to the ceiling. A perfect view of the desert. Why? Why would they have win like why would they have windows in like their I don't know, that sounds weird. Plenty of floor space too, which reminds me. I go to my laptop and open my email. There's one from Amazon confirming my order. Fuck Amazon. Hopefully it gets here soon. What's <laughs> there's a knock on my door. I open it to see the Bostonian runner. What's up, Scout? Hey, you toots. Dinner's ready. Angie sent me to get you. Sweet. Let's go. I close my door and headed downstairs. Before I even enter the room, the smell of chili hits my nose. When we walk in, Demo Man saw us and gave Angie the spoon that was... The, the, the spoon the was stirring with. There you are, lassie. Sorry I didn't get to greet you. I was pissed drunk. He shook my hand with a strong yet gentle grip. Name's Tavish. Or Demo. Amelia. Well, Amelia, I hope you like- I hope you like chili, I smiled and nodded. Okay, this is kind of wholesome. Once everyone, bar spy, arrived- I, lo I love how we just always have to, you know- I mean, I guess that's an important, you know, thing, but, like, conveniently, yeah. We all grabbed a bowl of chili and sat down. They eat together, like a family, I thought to myself. I w it was mostly small talk between them all. But then Angie spoke up. So Amelia, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to sound formal, but tell us about yourself. We, oui, Sherry, I for one, for one am very curious, Spy said, only just joining us. He had this look in his eyes. The one he looked, the one I know all too well, he looked at my file. What? What does that even mean? Well, where to begin? I had a fairly average life, graduated top of my class in high school, went on this- I want- I want to choke this your name. <laughs> went on to study criminal investigation. I worked for the CIA for a few years, then retired to be a mercenary. That's- oh, okay, I mean, I get- is that really I mean, I guess that's retiring. The CIA still contacts me for odd jobs, though I finished. Oh, that's so- Interesting, but what is your class, Fra? Fra? We were not told, Medic asked. Agent, Scout chuckled. Looks like you got some competition, Spy. Not really, I said. While there are many similarities, I can tell you now it's not the same thing. Oh yes, please, please inform us. I'd love to know about how much better you are than Spy, because I know that's where this is going. Example. Well, for one thing, while Spies use more of a stealthy approach, as in that's what by a more stealthy approach, you mean a complete stealthy approach. I'm more head-on, making me an offense class, not support. That's not how you spell offense. Well now, boys. I'd like to make a toast to our new Merc. Welcome to the family, Amelia. They all raised their glasses, toast, and we continued chatting. LOL time, Skip! After dinner, I offered to wash the dishes. Engie insisted otherwise, but I told him I had nothing better to do, which was true. Bonjour, ma chérie, Spy said, leaning against the counter next to me. I quite enjoyed learning more about you. Thanks. 
Though I'm sure I didn't say anything you didn't already know. He looked shocked. How did you... I've worked for three U.S. government agencies. I know how to read people. You walked in here with a glint in your eye. You looked up at my... You looked up my file. Am I wrong? His face softened. Softened. And he smiled, lightly chuckling. No, you are not. So, you no doubt... Question, you no doubt questions as to why certain parts were blacked out. We, oui. I sighed and turned to him. With that, is that even, I mean, I guess if we like, would that even make sense? Like, how do you black out, like, like a public, like, do, like government document? I don't know, man. And no one noticed, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm just not. I'm just not- I haven't worked for, like, four CIA government agencies, guys. Well, I have a complicated past. Stuff I don't want people to know. Why? I look him in his rather handsome blue eyes. We all have our demons. Minds can never see the light of day. I look down at my feet, not wanting to remember. Very well. Wait. Very well. I perk up. Really? We. Oui. Well, I've only, only known you a short while, but I already hold more respect for you than the others. <laughs> if you do not wish for me to pry, I won't. He holds more respect for this woman he just met two days ago than, like, the people he's worked with for probably, like, maybe at least a, you know, a while at this point. You mean it? He smiled softly and took my hand, placing it over his heart. I felt my own heartbeat quicken. Gentleman's honor. Thank you. I say. I blush evident on my face. Bon nuit, spy. Bon nuit, Amelia. I'm pretty sure you don't... Just gonna flex here. I don't think you... You wouldn't capitalize nuit like that. But that's okay. Because you don't capitalize good night in English. I think that that's a wonderful place to to end today. Uh, the candle is officially. That's how you know. That's how we're gonna end these. I'm gonna light a candle at the beginning of every one, and then we'll then we'll blaze it up at the end. Um. <clears throat> Well, anyway, this is wonderful so far. I'm having a lot of fun. Not having as many big laughs as I did with the... The laugh... But I, I mean... There's nothing that's gonna make... I mean, like... Come on, guys. Like... The, the last one was a complete hoot and a holler. At least with this... I will give it that... This has, like, pretty... Like, good English. You know what I mean? Um... Like, good sentence... Sentence structure and things like that. Like... It, it's not going to win any prizes, but, like, I mean, I, I don't really, you know. I'm not too picky about stuff like that. Obviously, some little, like, you can tell, like, that maybe they didn't ch double check this, you know, that many times. And that's fine. You know, it's obvious. I think they just posted this for fun, like a lot of these are. But, but anyway, we will save our complete review for the next time. I have hope you had fun... I've hope you didn't I've hope you've enjoyed your stay here today. I hope you um I hope you'll be back next time for part two of the epic conclusion of spy simping for this amazingly smart um top of her class um agent. Goodbye everyone. Au revoir et ambiento. Au revoir et au revoir et à bientôt. That was probably really bad. Bye.